Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and welcome to a quick therapeutic exercise that boosts emotional resilience. How regularly feeling grateful can help your clients feel better. Now, people often say that we in Western modern societies have it really easy that we have first world problems. A middle class guy worrying about where his life is going as he turns 40 might seem ridiculous to a man who's wondering if he'll be alive tomorrow or whether he can feed his family for another week or whether they'll ever drink clean water again. He might feel that someone who's sure that he's going to turn 40 is terribly lucky just knowing that you're going to turn 40 when he himself can only focus on day-to-day survival. People who suddenly find themselves facing real problems often start to wonder how they could have ever got so worked up about what they thought were problems before. I recall a man who developed an aggressive and terminal cancer telling me wistfully how amazed he was and how worried he used to be about stuff that now seemed like nothing to him. He'd love to be able to just worry about that kind of stuff. Be a luxury. He used to fret about whether he should be doing this job or that job or dating this or that woman or what he was going to do with his life. And he told me how he now felt like he had never before had a single genuine problem in his life, or certainly not one that required so much hand-wringing and fretting as he'd done before anyway. So the worried well. Okay, You often hear people use the term the worried well, which refers to people who don't need medical treatment, but who visit the doctor for reassurance or with emotional problems. And these are people whose problems would not seem at all real to certain other people or whose problems would likely be diluted to vanishing point if they were to find themselves in terrible third world conditions where minute to minute survival, physical survival, was the only pressing issue. These obvious if rather uncomfortable facts lie behind well-meaning advice like, you know, some people are worse off than you, you know, or you should be grateful. You could be starving or in a war zone or have some terrible disease. Okay, but people giving this kind of advice often appeal to history as in, you know, imagine if you'd been Jewish under the Nazis or uh, a Tutsi in Rwanda during the genocides there in the 1990s, you know. So whose life is it anyway? So the awkward thing is that people who dish out this kind of platitude aren't wrong technically in a way, But they are wrong in the sense that this kind of think-yourself-lucky approach seldom actually makes anybody feel any happier. Guilty, yes, but not happier. You see, it's not as if the guy who's constantly worrying about the state of his marriage or, or the woman who has a terrible phobia of elevators or social events is unaware that some people are starving or facing execution and so on. It's not that they don't know that. Of course they are. Of course they do. But that awareness doesn't often make a difference to them because they are in their life. Okay? The fact is that fear, anxiety and hopelessness are correlated with life circumstances, but only up to a point. And what I mean is that living in a nice, safe environment is correlated with feeling safe and secure, but the correlation isn't as exact as you might think. So, you know, I've worked with housewives whose terror of their next panic attack was no less than the terror of a guy who'd been kidnapped in Nigeria and believed he was going to be shot at any moment. Two of my ex-clients. So fear is fear, whether it's fear of starvation or execution or fear of white-collar bullies at work. Someone who is frightened or depressed in an outwardly perfectly safe and secure environment still feels as if they're living in an unsafe life and that's why they need help from us. So gratitude and suffering. But I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. While making people feel bad for feeling bad doesn't tend to do anything other than add guilt to their miseries. There is something to be said for practicing gratitude and reflecting on comparative difficulties. From Buddha to uh, Cicero, many philosophers have celebrated gratitude and the world's great religions, including Christianity and Hinduism and Islam and others, have all at various times promulgated the idea that being grateful encourages reciprocal kindness um, as well as individual and collective well-being. Research studies on gratitude have found that people who are encouraged to reflect regularly on what they can be grateful for enjoy increased alertness, enthusiasm, 
optimism and energy. And in one study with hundreds of participants, the gratitude group experienced less depression, exercised more regularly, and made more progress towards personal goals. According to these research findings, people who feel regular gratitude are more likely to feel loved and respected than the non-grateful. They also showed better immune function and less physical illness, which is absolutely amazing. And see reference one at the bottom of this video. So rather than just noting the bare fact that there are people physically worse off than us, it may be better for us to actively focus on what we do have so that we start to actually notice and appreciate that we have access to clean water or the internet or other people uh, aren't trying to kill us and so forth. And of course, everything is relative. You know, if you're earning um, 200,000 a year, you might feel hard done by if you know that someone is earning 400,000 a year. So your bad feelings come from focusing on what someone else has that's more than what you have. If you see clients who need help focusing on the positive, here's a useful therapeutic exercise you can use to help them feel better without laying on guilt uh, for them to deal with. A therapeutic exercise to help your client practice gratitude. So next time your client feels really worried or down, encourage them to think of three ways in which it could be even worse. And I don't mean think about how other people have it worse in other parts of the world, but how it could be worse for them but isn't. So if they feel bad because, uh, let's say, a friend snubbed them, okay, then get them to think, okay, I feel really bad about that, but at least I have other good friends. At least I have a bed for the night. At least I have enough money for food. And at least there's a chance I can improve that relationship with that particular friend in the future. Then spend a couple of minutes really imagining not having these things. Really imagine the full reality. Okay. What will you see? What will you hear? What will you physically feel of being in the condition of having absolutely no friends, of, of having no food, of having nowhere to sleep, or no whatever it is? Now, I don't normally tell people to imagine things being worse. I guess not something I normally do, but weirdly, doing this can be a powerful way for your client to feel better with what they already have by imagining not having it. Okay. But remember, for this to work, your client needs to actually imagine just for a few moments the reality of thing if things were worse. So please don't get them to reflect on what they've actually been worrying about. Okay. We don't need to encourage those worries, but just a thought exercise or an imagination exercise. If they uh, really have been worrying about ending up with no money or no food or no friends, then don't choose those particular things. Always pick something that would be worse, but they feel won't actually ever happen or is unlikely to happen. And of course, this isn't a way to cure clinical depression, but it can be a really good habit to get your client into uh, keep a sense of perspective as they travel through life. Your client will find it really powerful and also strangely mood enhancing as it improves their emotional resilience. Alphonse Carr said, Some people grumble that roses have thorns. I'm grateful that thorns have roses. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Terrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com slash blog. That's unk.com slash blog. And thanks for watching.